Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how you can write and then use a macro when you need to quickly fill in missing cell labels, blank cell labels. So over here a colleague has sent me a report but notice all of these blank cells over here. So this report may have been created by a pivot table or could have been created using a, a relational database program such as Access. So it's a nice looking report and I have a summary of the region and then within the region each of the individual states in that region and their sales. However, what I want to be able to do, I want to be able to create custom filters and possibly create my own pivot table. Before I can do that, I must fill in these blank cells, the missing labels. So I've listed over here my options. I could make a copy, select, make a copy with Control Z, and then highlight the range and Control V to paste. But, you know, that's rather tedious, isn't it? So I'll use Control Z to undo that. If I only have a handful of missing labels, I could use a very fast keyboard shortcut control apostrophe control apostrophe will copy the contents of the cell directly above so if we have just a handful that's terrific my third option is to use the auto fill handle so over here if I want to copy this label Midwest down into this blank area what I want to do is select it and then move my mouse to the lower right corner and then drag to auto fill a copy of that label now that is error prone because I guarantee that sooner or later when you do this you'll get distracted by a phone and you're going to over copy one or more of the labels so that's a no-no what I'm going to demonstrate is the basis for a macro I'm going to show you how we can first make a selection within this data range of only the blank cells and then write a formula that will copy the label that is in the cell directly above and then copy and paste the formulas into values. That will become the basis for our macro. Now I've already written the macro and I want to show you what the macro will look like in terms of code. So on the developer tab of the ribbon come over here and I want to show the code, the visual basic code over here. So this is the code that I have. They're really just three lines of code and it will perform this function very quickly as you will see. I'm going to run the macro right from here so watch what will happen when I click over here to run and run the macro bingo you see how now all of my blank uh, uh, cells are filled in all of those blank labels are filled in now we'll come back and examine how this works in just a minute what I want to do is I'm going to work on a copy over here so let's think this through. What I want to do is, of course, number one, make a selection of any cell inside the data set. Next, I need to find a way to quickly select all of the blank cells. Fortunately, that's easy to do. I'm using Excel 2010. If you're using 2007, it works the same way. Home tab of the ribbon and come over here into the editing group. Notice that there's a drop down next to find and select. And we have go to go to special and within the go to special dialog box these are the most popular special selections to make so let's open up the go to special dialog box now if you are using Excel 2003 let me show you another way to open up the go to special dialog box use the keyboard shortcut control G G stands for go to and then you have a special button down here so here's our go to special dialog box we want to select make a selection of only the blank cells so when I click OK notice that now all of the blank cells are selected inside the data set now we can write our formula so I'll use the equal sign to begin the formula and this is a very simple formula I use the up directional arrow in other words I point to the cell directly above the blank and what I want to do is I want to copy the value of the cell directly above now remember I have made a multiple selection by using the go to special blank so instead of hitting enter which would enter the formula into one cell only I want to enter it into all of the cells in my selection so I use control enter so now I have filled in the blanks but remember that these are still formulas so the next part of this will be to make a copy and then paste the formulas especially as values so I made a selection of the entire column A I want to copy and then come back here and I want to paste special the values only and I'll use escape to remove that selection from the clipboard 
All right, so that works really, really well. Now, let's come over here and let's take a look at how the macro works. So if you're using Excel 2007, Excel 2010, you first must make sure that you have the developer tab showing on the ribbon. Now I'm in Excel 2010. Here's how we make sure that the developer tab is showing. Go to the file button, which opens up the backstage view. We want to come down here into options and then we want to say customize the ribbon. And over here, notice that these are all the tabs. By default, the developer is not showing, so we want to make sure that we select that. If you're using Excel 2007, the way that you add the Developer tab to the ribbon is the Office button, and down here in Excel Options, on the Popular tab, you want to make sure that you check Show the Developer tab in the ribbon. So you don't have to worry about the developer in Excel 2003. You don't have the ribbon. So I have the Developer tab, which means that I can write and then store macros. So I want to open up that macro. Click over here. This is the macro that I want to examine. So I'm going to say I want to edit it. This opens up the Visual Basic, the VBA dialog box. So I first off have to create a name for the macro, and all macros begin with sub. Sub stands for, or it's a shorthand for sub procedure. So sub, and then give your macro a name. All macro names must begin with a letter, and they cannot contain any spaces. And notice that we also have a left and a right parenthesis. So it resembles a formula. Now over here in the green font and with the apostrophe, that's a comment. So I want to remind myself a month from now what this macro is supposed to do. So I wrote uh, the, the comments in by putting an apostrophe first. And the apostrophe turns whatever uh, I write into a green font by default. So this macro will first select all of the blank cells. Remember how I used the go to special dialog box to select the blank cells? And then it will use a formula to copy the label in the row directly above and then paste that formula as a value. So three lines of code. This is an optional line to put in there. In other words, if I'm going to come across an error, I don't want this macro to come to a screeching halt. So on error, resume next. That's optional. So first, what we want to do is we want to make a selection inside our data set. So we use range A1. A1 is not literal in this case. It's just saying pick a cell and then consider that as your starting point. In other words, A1 as a starting point. From there, then look inside the current region, look inside the data set, and then go out and make a special selection. Find those special cells. It's just like going to the Go To Special dialog box, and then what type of special selection do you want to make? The type is the blank cells. Now let's write the formula. Now, if you've not written macros before, uh, you, this may seem strange. Formula in R1, C1 style. R stands for row, C stands for column. So rather than writing column row A1, B5, we write in the macro formula R1, C1. So row 1, column 1. So over here, we're using formula R1, C1 style. We put an equal sign in there to say, well, what does that equal? And then notice that we actually write our formula inside double quotation mark. So equals the row go up one row from your starting point. So our starting point, remember, was range A1. So from that row, go one row up. The minus means go one row up. If I didn't have a minus, it would go one row down from your starting point, but stay in this column. So now we've made our selection of the blank cells only in the current region we've written the formula to copy the value from above. And now the next line of code is we want to make a copy of uh, all of the cells in there and then paste them as a value. So range A1 in the current region, select the values. And then after we select it, what we're doing over here when we say equal, range A1 current region value is we've made a copy and then we've pasted them specially as a value. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run you through what's called the debugging. So I want to test this out step 
by step. So when I click debug and step into it, notice the keyboard shortcut F8. So it first highlights with the yellow font behind the name of the function. I'll press F8. Now notice that it does skip over the comment. So when I press F8 again, it's going to run this first line of code. Here is the next line that will be run when I press F8 again. So notice that what it did over here, it made an actual selection uh, in the current region of the blank cells and it actually created a formula over here. Let's bring back that macro over here. So now when I run this, it's going to change that formula into a value, F8, and then F8 to finish it off. So you see how quickly that ran? Let's come over here, and this time I'm going to run the macro by coming up to the Developer tab on the ribbon, Code, Macros, make the selection of the macro, and this time I'm going to say Run, and bingo. There you go. So there you've learned a great trick. You've learned how you can quickly select all the blank cells, use a formula to copy the value from the label directly above that blank, and then make a copy and paste special. So I'll look for you in the next lesson.